If you've been watching the channel lately, you know that our podcast sponsor, Johnson Plastics Plus, sent over a big free box of goodies for us to check out. We recently unboxed it, and I promised I would go in-depth on each material individually and how they performed on the array of lasers in our shop. This is the third episode of that testing. Today, we're getting into the Johnson Plastics Plus offering on color woods. It's actually a really interesting material, color dyed plywoods, and we do a lot of fun stuff with this material, guys. I think you're really going to enjoy this one, so make sure not to go anywhere. We've got a lot of cool little mini projects lined up for you and some tests on various lasers, so don't go anywhere because we're getting started right now. All right, guys, we're getting started here with some testing before we actually try to do any projects with this material, though this is a project heavy episode. We did take advantage of this material and tried to do some projects for you guys to check out. So we'll be taking a look at those really soon. But first, the testing and the first of the testing, we're going to be looking at the X-Tool D1 Pro. Tried to do both the red and the green color shop woods on every laser. So you're seeing both of those run here. And while we didn't really end up marking this material too much, we did want to make sure we at least tested out the marking before moving on to what we think this material strong suit is, which is cutting out pieces for mounted signage and displays. The CO2 gantry is up next, and this is on the Ranger 3 from Light Object. Really clean cuts. The dot size is a little bit large, so you struggle with some of the smaller details, but the final result is high contrast and pretty high quality. Next up is the CO2 Galvo, and this provided one of the prettiest marks, I think. Really clean. It looks a bit off putting right now, but a second pass cleans that right up, it gets rid of all that soot, and you're left with a really nice high contrast wood grain pattern that's got pretty much all of the color out of the final mark. It is sharp and crisp and really easy to see. The CO2 Galvo is also capable of cutting these out, which is great. So we love to be able to cut on the Galvo when it's convenient and small enough. And we'll go ahead and pop this out here and let's take a closer look and get an idea of the contrast. Didn't cut all the way through, but that's something that we can easily rectify by adding another pass or a little bit more power. And check out that contrast. That looks great, super bright and easy to see. And just to make sure, we're gonna go ahead and run this on the red color shop wood as well, just to make sure that we don't run into any unexpected problems. An air assist would have helped here a little bit with the flame, but that's why we're masking it. It is totally cuttable on the CO2 Galvo. This is with the 30 watt laser too. So if you have more than that, you're gonna have an even easier time. And we'll pop this one out. As you can see, we compensated for that bad cut last time. And this time we've got really, really great results. And the contrast looks just as good on the red as it did on the green, if not a little better. Next up, everybody's favorite, the UV laser. We went ahead and ran the same test, a mark and a cut. And the mark looks beautiful, really great contrast. No mask required. And the UV also did a great job cutting this out. You can see how small the kerf is there. It's very, very precise and effective at cutting this material for sure. Here is the final photo and it looks great. Okay, for the last test, we ran some tests on the Xtool F1. And this is the laser that struggled the most, I think. It just had a really hard time marking the material effectively. But it did do a great job cutting, which gave us some ideas for some projects later in the episode. That said, we're focused on the mark right now, and this definitely leaves a little something to be desired. We do eventually get it cleaned up, mostly by removing the mask, which really helped the laser carve into the surface of the wood more consistently. It's still not perfect and could definitely use some improvement, but once we have it cut out, it's pretty clear to see that with a little trial and error, you should be able to get something usable out of this laser if you really do need to mark this for some reason. We did just take a second to wipe off some soot, and here is a final look at some of the marks we were able to achieve with the X-Tool F1. 
Some came out better than others, and this material really isn't great for marking, but it definitely cuts on the X-Tool, so we'll make special note of that. All right, let's get started with the first project. I wanted to do an apple right off the bat. The green and the red just reminded me of an apple, and you guys know Matt Bofford. He is a teacher, and I wanted to make Matt an apple, so we cut an apple out of the Color Shop Woods and we engraved a little brass plaque with the fiber laser with his name and the year on it. And we just used some super glue for adhesive and threw this together. It really didn't take that long. You should be able to knock a bunch of these out super quick once you get the flow down. And so I think this is a pretty neat little project to be able to do quickly and cost effectively. We'll go ahead and just get the brass plate laid in and take a look at that guys the colors are really complimentary and it's just got a nice shine to it and the red and green really pop with the plain wood backer this is a great example of what i would consider this material strong point to be which is cut projects so if you want to cut out colored pieces of wood and layer them this material is going to do a really really good job with this kind of work here are a couple last looks at the final product on the Apple project. And I think it's really pretty. I'm actually super, super proud of this one. All right, guys, next up, I wanted to do a sign, an actual sign. I found the perfect piece of wood that we could mount some text on. And right away, we started cutting with the X tool F1. And as you can see, it burned almost right away. So we had to go back to masking. We didn't want to mask it at first because it did a bad job with the mark, but since we're only cutting, I really think the mask is gonna be required here. And when we try to cut this again with the mask, we can see a huge improvement in the overall results. It runs pretty fast too. It doesn't take that long to get this material cut on the F1. You just do have the size limitation. So whatever it is that you wanna do is either gonna to have to fit within the work area or you're gonna to have to do a bunch of smaller parts that will individually fit in the work area to be combined on something larger, which is what we do here. So there's a look at the hello with the mask. And if we peel this mask off, we will be able to compare without and with the mask. And you can see just at a glance, the massive difference that the mask makes. So we can set these aside. And for the rest of the sign, I thought a couple of red stars would be a nice contrast just so we could get a little bit of the other color in there. And these were super easy, very, very simple to cut out, took far less work. Again, I think the mask is vital here, but you can just lift the wood right up and the pieces just fall out, which is perfect. We'll go ahead and peel the mask off and we can start gluing these pieces together. And I've said it a few times, guys, but this is this material strong suit is being able to cut it out and mount it on things. And this is just a piece of plain wood that I had laying around the shop. And the color shop woods are so bright in comparison. It really, really pops. And there we go. A simple little sign. It doesn't have to say hello world. Obviously, it can say whatever you want. But this is just another thing you can offer just with some cut material and it's instant color. And that's really cool for our industry to be able to cut something out so colorful right out of a stock material that isn't plastic. For the last project here, I wanted to do some puzzles. I've always wanted to do jigsaw puzzles on laser and I've never really tried it before. So we're going to start with this squirrel base here and the outline and then we'll get the pieces cut out. And this is just a file I found online. Everything cuts super easily on the CO2 Galvo, as you saw during the testing phase. And once we get all these pieces cut out, we can strip the mask off and start to assemble it. And I actually had, I had a hard time putting these puzzles together because I didn't really have a great reference. So I had to sit and manually do it. But there it is, a little green squirrel. And we gave everything a quick sand and then we can start applying our layers to hold the puzzle pieces in place. Very simple. So we'll go ahead and get that pressed on. And a final sand around the edge, just to make sure everything feels nice and smooth. And we can start inserting our puzzle pieces. And there you go. There's a little squirrel jigsaw puzzle. It's kind of a silly project. So I wanted to do one that 
might be a little more real world relevant. So I decided to do a heart for a Valentine's Day style gift. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to cut the outline out and then we're going to cut a backer out for it and all of our little jigsaw pieces. And again, you can find these files online super easy. So if we lift up, you can see we really dialed in those cut settings and the outer board just lifts away, which is super nice. And we'll get the mask peeled off of everything here and we can start assembling our little jigsaw puzzle. Before we start putting the pieces in, I did want to just engrave a little message and I really like the way the UV engraving looked. So we did it on that laser and now we can start putting the puzzle pieces in. It took me a while, so we're going to speed through it here. But once it's all put together, this is such a nice little gift. And if they take the puzzle out inside is their names and the date. And it's really, really pretty once it's all done. Especially, I actually ran a little bit of sandpaper over the heartwood so that it looked a little more worn. And I think that added a lot to it as well. And here's a final look at the puzzles that we did. I hope that this video gave you a decent idea of what can be done with this material. I had a blast with these projects. This is the first time with some of the Johnson Plastics Plus supplied goodies uh, that I've actually wanted to do like a real project as the review rather than a bunch of technical tests. And it's just so fun to use. It's so fun to play with. And you can do so many creative things that are different than just your regular old laser marking. And I really appreciate that about this material. They have more than just red and green too. There's a ton of different colors on their website that you can get. And it's not even that expensive. It's more expensive than regular plywood for sure, but it's not too bad considering how bright and vibrant and high contrast this material is. I really like the natural feel of the color shop woods too, in comparison to something like Romark. If you're looking for something different, Everything these days is acrylic and being able to get such bright colors out of a more natural material is really inspiring to be able to do some new creative high quality work. Anyway, guys, I think that's all I've got for this one. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you got value out of it, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know that the content is good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we upload an episode. If you want to support the channel, feel free to do that over at masters.lasereverything.net, the number one place to support the channel and make sure we can keep doing what we love to do. There's a ton of great goodies for signing up over there and you get access to one of the absolute best laser communities that the overall laser community has to offer. The guys over there are so nice, so friendly, so helpful. And if that all sounds a little overboard for you, but you still want to support us, you can find out all of your other options over at lasereverything.net slash support. Thanks so much one last time for watching this episode. I'm really, really glad that you stopped by for this one, and we will see you in the next one.